Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Scott Gustin, director of veterinary services for Tyson. Scott, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for having me. Now, I know that Tyson, like a lot of the major producers in the country right now, is looking at antibiotic-free production. You've devoted at least a portion of your production to uh, antibiotic-free. When they first came to you uh, with this idea that, that they wanted to do that, what was your immediate reaction as a veterinarian? Uh, yeah, there's, there's always the, I guess, the ethical dilemma of um, making sure that, that in that process, uh, bird welfare is not compromised at, at any point in time. Um, I, think, I think the most important thing is you, is you have thresholds for what you're going to do as far as maybe a palliative treatment or, or when antibiotic treatment needs to, needs to happen on a farm. So I think you, you have to be very, very clear what those thresholds are and hold yourself to those thresholds. And specifically, uh, what were your concerns? What did you think or fear that you might see? I guess you could take morbidity into account, but for the most part, it just it would be uh, um, mortality through necrotic enteritis. That would be first and foremost on our list. And and, and uh, we'd had prior experiences with uh, with antibiotic-free production, so we I think we had a, a good game plan. Did the mortality increase, or what did you see? Depending upon the program, uh, we've seen with uh, if, if, if we manage coccidiosis and, and uh, our Clostridium challenges appropriately, honestly, uh, you, you can you can roll on along without any of those things. But there are going to be circumstances where farm-specific factors or program-specific factors are going to uh, set the animals up for for a, a, a situation where you are going to need to treat. And did it seem to work better in some seasons than in others? Yes, and that's it really is a, by virtue of what, what coccidiosis control program you're on. So, you know, we tend to see a little bit more uh, issues and need for treatments when we weren't managing our coccidiosis vaccines versus a, a strong chemical program that, that, that works very, very well. Uh, but even there, you, you can have your challenges. And so we've, we've tried to look at those products that, that might complement that and then uh, as well as uh, even, even uh, water interventions or something that you might uh, have as a preventative type therapy or program to kind of anticipate a problem. Now, I would imagine that when you decided to go antibiotic free, you just didn't pull the medication from, from the feed and, and put the same birds out there. Yeah, I'm guessing that you took some other precautions. Uh, yeah, we did. Um, we had some, uh, some changes done to density uh, that, that might have been for some other programs as well. But um, I'd say we just looked at the whole program in ways that we would manage this differently than a conventional program. Uh, by virtue of the program, we had to clean out houses and start fresh, which actually can present some more problems in it than it solves. But, um, but uh, there's some things that we set up on the farms to, to help, I guess, ameliorate that. But um, it, it's also that you have to think about antibiotic free in terms of the whole program. So if there's any other, say, additional welfare programs that are, that are brought in with that, uh, they might also work against you in, in how productive you're gonna be or successful. Were there any other changes that were made, let's say, to the feed? Well, you're gonna try and get your feed to where uh, you're gonna have more digestible ingredients, uh, maybe uh, ease back on some of the byproducts, especially in those, those at-risk times. So uh, your first two feeds, it might be uh, starter or grower feeds. You really need to look at those and, and not have anything, too much protein or a, or a poor digestible product that, that might be in there. You have to watch that. It, it's just gonna add to your uh, risk for necrotic enteritis. So you're going with an all vegetable diet in those birds? Those would be other factors that the, that the customer might want but I don't think that's necessarily, you have to be all veggie to be successful in antibiotic free production. I really, um, animal protein is, is good quality stuff and, uh, and it's, a, it's an asset you can utilize and still be successful. I really believe that. Now you mentioned necrotic enteritis a moment ago. Uh, usually if you don't get all of the coccidiosis under control, as you well know, it's not long before enteritis comes out. Um, what was your experience in the uh, antibiotic free birds? Well, you have to look at your, your peak times. I mean, this is, this is kind of, I guess, uh, logical to most people is, you know, work, look at those peak times where your oasis uh, really go, go crazy and, and make sure your, your feed timings don't, don't uh, as far as when you're transitioning your feeding program, make sure that those things don't coincide at the wrong time. But uh, day 17 is gonna be an at-risk time. Day 28 is gonna be an at-risk time. So you wanna watch how those transitions go and, uh, 
And I think, you know, uh, engaging your, your partners with it, which uh, could be so it could be anyone, I guess, but uh, getting, getting other veterinarians and other health professionals involved in, in making a success. And so you're continually monitoring the program. Obviously, you need to focus even more on management mm -hmm. with antibiotic free. Has this made you a, an even better veterinarian? It's made us look at the problem or the, the opportunity that exists with gut health challenges. And it is, it's forced us to evaluate alternative products and uh, maybe some areas we thought we were better, but uh, that Ionophores or other products were maybe covering some things up that we, uh, we had some opportunities with. So, you know, coccidiosis management will be one, but overall uh, gut integrity. Because we've even found that, that when you don't have coccidiosis out of control, you can still have clostridium issues. So looking at alternatives and how probiotics, prebiotics, mosses, fosses, whatever, phytogenics, organic acids, finding out how they can complement any program, whether it's antibiotic free or your conventional program, because uh, the world out there is changing and we have to change with it. Now, what about going, taking these birds and going into processing? Did you see uh, anything different with the antibiotic free birds? Um, actually, our condemnation was, uh, was fairly similar in both classes. Uh, if you do have, let's say, if you, if all veggie feeds are going to be are going to be utilized in the, for for that request for that customer, you do have to watch for things like paw quality. Uh, litter moisture can be a bigger issue with veggie diets, and, and those can lead to, I'd say, bird health or, or carcass quality, bird uniformity. But but for the most part, when our mortality is under control, our gut health program is under control, we really don't see any differences in condemnation. What about in the overall disease spectrum itself? We've talked about coccidiosis and necrotic enteritis, but in the antibiotic-free birds, did you find that uh, they were susceptible to any other bugs that you didn't have before? You know, I really can't think of anything else uh, because you know our, our company's made the the transition with with uh, removing hatchery antibiotics. So I think that was probably the biggest difference, but since that was a, that was a company-wide move, I, I'd say that um, that was the only other issue we could see with antibiotic-free production is, is, is managing chick quality, getting a, getting a better, better chick out, out to the farms. Have you taken anything that you've learned from antibiotic-free and applied it to your conventional flocks? Absolutely. Uh, so we found that uh, the same, some of these alternative products, say, uh, organic acids or phytogenics, essential oils, we found that, yes, they can they can complement a good antibiotic-free program, and even they can complement a good ionophore or anticoccidial program. So, you know, it, gut health is always important, and and, uh, and these, these helpers can be year in, year out, uh, season to season, they can be effective interventions, and you can get performance out of them even when you're not running an antibiotic-free program. Scott, let's um, shift gears and talk about food safety. It's a big concern in any, any industry. Uh, the poultry industry certainly gives it a lot of attention. You're on the live production side of the business. What are you doing to make sure that the birds that are going into Tyson's processing plant are as healthy or at least have the lowest pathogen load possible? I think that that's, that's, that's critical on the live side is that we are finding ways to reduce the incoming load to processing plants. We can't have the plants doing, bearing all the load of the work. Um, and so, you know, our, our focus is, is first and foremost has been on, on where are the processes where we can uh, monitor and then apply different interventions as we see fit. So a colleague of mine, Dr. Alfonso, she always refers to things like uh, baking a cake or or making making live production very you know simple and and uh, very procedural. So if I think about the hatchery, I, I, that's where all your ingredients go into the hatchery, and that's your that's your mixing bowl. And if you get bad ingredients in, well, then that's what you're you're dealing out to all these uh, the the brother farms. And and no matter what uh, icing you want to put on that cake, it's not going to be a very good cake if the ingredients aren't any good. So so that's a uh, you know, that's where a lot of our monitoring really starts is at the hatchery. So we want to prevent, you know, vertical transmission from occurring. We want to know what serotypes are out there uh, and then go and chase those ones that we do find if, if, if one is, you know, problematic in an operation. But I think the hatchery is for live production where you can, that's a very, very good starting point to, to know where to go. Ironically, I know that's an area where you've taken out the antibiotic as a lot of people have because 
basically the industry just didn't really consider that to be judicious use. So that was certainly warranted. Uh, but d did you see, after you did that, did you see any change in the health profile of your birds? I wouldn't say uh, health profile, but uh, there are some instances where that might have been, uh, let's say, cover up, covering up some things that were there. So just like uh, sanitation in general, I mean, uh, if, if, if you had some some uh, some things you needed to hide or you had some scars or something like that, if the, if the baby's ugly, it's ugly, you know? So uh, I think, yeah, it was covering up some things, so you just redouble your efforts on sanitation and finding out where the problem was. But but at the same time, it's, it's not gonna mask anything and you can go find out what the real problem is. All right, well, well said. Um, we have been talking to Scott Gustin. He's the Director of Veterinary Services at Tyson. Scott, thank you again for stopping by. Sure thing. Yeah.